Hey folks, Mark here from Sea Wild Earth and uh, welcome again. We're going to go and do a, a little bit more um, super long exposure photography um, because I wanted to just touch on how to calculate um, exposures um, using uh, smart apps. Uh, you may remember before, um, I think about a week ago, I made another video about doing some long exposures over at a place called Cape Zampa. Uh, and in that video, I said that there were the best way to to find your exposure is, is just to walk your way in i mean we live in a smart digital age uh, and there are tools that will allow you to get ballpark um, i don't particularly use them uh, but that may just be down to the fact that i shoot so much uh, long exposure photography i've got kind of like a feel uh, for the settings based on the weather conditions of the day um, so without further ado, we're going to take a stroll. In fact, I haven't had to bring a car today because this is not my back garden, but my apartment backs onto this, uh, this whole uh, nice kind of like garden area. So uh, we're just going to walk about another couple of minutes down to a, a little cove. Uh, and there's an area there that I want to shoot uh, again with a super long exposure. But this time we're going to calculate the exposure using a, a couple of smart apps um, so that I can show you how good, bad or indifferent they may be. OK, or how accurate at least they are. OK, so let's get on to that. Folks, it's one of my uh, favourite local places to uh, photograph. It's literally 30 seconds a minute to walk from the house, so uh, right on the doorstep, but it's pretty awesome. I'm probably going to have to wait just a short while to let the water go down just a little bit more. I'll let you know. I'll show you what I mean. Pretty awesome little uh, cave system here, or archways. It's quite popular with the... Um, quite popular with the uh, people who do the couples photography. They'll bring couples down here and they'll do, or even um, pre-wedding shoots down here. Um, but it's this view that I want to get here. As you can see just out here, there's a few rocks that just break the surface. Um, and today, and I want to get that uh, with a long exposure. But I'm just gonna have to wait, like I say, let the water go down a bit, uh, the tide is going out, so hopefully it won't be too long. Okay, today I'm gonna to be shooting on a, uh, my Canon EOS 5DSR. The lens I've got fitted is a 24 to 70 f2.8 from Canon, uh, and I'm probably gonna be shooting at around 70 millimeter uh, from this, um, but yep, that's all well and good. Um, I don't know about you, but I've, I've found these things as well, which I've seen advertised so much on, on Facebook, these covered uh, little uh, lens covers. I use them now religiously on most of my cameras, uh, most of my lenses, sorry. Uh, but it's just like a, a rubber cap, uh, and this isn't sponsored by these guys in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this is just because I love them. It's just like a little shower cap that fits over, offers nice weather protection to the front of the lens, but they're just so easy to get off and put back on. Good stuff. Anyway, um, so today I'm going to be using the same filters that I normally use, uh, and they are going to be from the uh, Kani company here in uh, Japan. Um, first off, the filter or the, the filter holder. Um, the default on the adapter is 82 millimeters, which is exactly the same as this particular lens. So all I need to do is screw the main adapter or the filter holder adapter onto the front of the lens and you've got then this flange and that flange houses the filter holder on the back side of which you've got these two little collars that fit over the edge of the filter holder and then by pulling out this spring-loaded locking pin once it's in place you let that go and it releases and holds back uh, the filter holder onto the lens okay now getting ready for a shot what i know what i'm normally get, not what i always am going to do actually is i'm initially i'm going to put the um uh neutral graduated filter in place first uh, because it's a filter that can easily be seen through uh, and it allows me then just uh, on my uh, composition to 
see where I place that uh, transition line for the sky or the area that needs to be masked by the filter. I'll get everything sorted out. I'll autofocus on my, on my spot that I want to have focused, um, get the orientation, the level, everything sorted out. And the last thing I'm then gonna do is put my lens over to manual. And the reason that I do that is because once we put the, um, the, the, 10, 000, the ND 10,000 in, which, hold on, uh, which as you can see, to all extents looks like a piece of welding glass. Uh, once I put that in front of the lens, the lens is not going to be able to focus uh, to any focus point that I introduce it to, right? So once the lens is focused, set it to manual, put the filter in, and then when you push the uh, shutter button, the camera is not going to hunt because it's on, on autofocus. It's, the focus is already set, so it doesn't need to worry about that. Uh, and then you're pretty much good to go. The only last thing that I then do um, is I will place a um, piece of black scotch tape over my eyepiece um, and so that is so that no light leaks go in through the eyepiece when I'm working with um, super long exposure times uh, and then you're pretty much good to go. Okay well here I am and everything's looking cool with the rocks there's enough uh, water now has descended down to give me the the shot that I want um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose or I'm going to meter the scene so that I can get my shutter speed so that then I can use the app to figure out what my adjusted shutter time is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to be on, let's just fire it up. So ISO 100, I'm going to be on F11. Okay. And I'm actually going to zoom in and I'm going to be shooting pretty much all the way in at about 70 millimeter. But that's the exposure that I want. And it's giving me a shutter speed of... Hold on. 1 over 125. So 125th of a shutter speed. So what does that mean when we've got an ND 10,000 fitted to the... Um, fitted to the camera um, if everything remains the same as in uh, ISO and aperture. Let's go and figure out what kind of shutter speed I'm going to be looking at to get this shot with an ND 10,000. Okay folks, well, as you saw, the, when I metered my shot, it gave me a shutter speed unfiltered at um, 1 over 125th of a second. All right, um, now, so what I'm going to do, I've got a couple of um, apps here that are used to figure out long exposure times uh, and the way that you do the whole operation is that, as you saw, I metered uh, and I'm shooting on the, on the Canon 24 to 70 f2.8. I was at 70 millimeters uh, and that gave me the correct uh, composition that I wanted. Um, metering f11 ISO 100 gave me uh, 1 over 125th. So all you need to do, I'm going to compare um, the results that I get from two apps, uh, but they work in exactly the same way, all right? Um, so what we're going to do, hold on, uh, is open one. Uh, and what it does, it gives you three options, or there's three segments to, to, the, to each app. The first aspect that you enter is the shutter speed that you received when you meter unfiltered uh, on your shot. Okay, so at, on that particular time, it was giving us a shutter speed of 1 over 125th. From there, the next option you do is you enter the information with regards to the strength of the ND filter that you're using. Now, in this case, the ND um, 10,000 is equal to 13.3 uh, stops of aperture light going into the camera, um, plus the neutral grad, which we're going to say adds another 1.5 stops of light. Um, so we're going to round everything down to about 15 stops of uh, light uh, reduction going into the lens, okay? Um, so I'm going to put the ND filter in at uh, 15 stops. And then what that does is the app calculates the adjusted shutter speed that I would need if I'm shooting with a 15 stop filter in on a shutter speed of 1 over 125th that was unfiltered. All right, and that's giving me an adjusted shutter speed of four minutes 
and 22 seconds. All right, so four minutes, 22 seconds. I'm just gonna check the uh, second app that I have here. Um, and same thing again, I'm just gonna put in my shutter speed that I was given and the 15 stops. And it's giving me a bit of a discrepancy. It's giving me four minutes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna split the difference between the two and I'm gonna put in four minutes and five seconds into my uh, shutter speed for, for this particular shot. So here we can see the information of the shot when it was um, unfiltered. And here we have the um, shutter speed, one over 125, F11, ISO 100. Okay, cloudy conditions. There's a little bit of sunshine, but it's mainly cloudy today. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to bulb mode, all right? Uh, and I've still got F11, ISO 100, which is good. In my menu, I'm going to enable my bulb timer. So enable. And what you'll see straight away is it's giving me a shutter speed of 2 minutes 42. That was from a previous shot. So I need to change that now and put in 4 minutes and 5 seconds. So the way that I do that is I'll go there and to information. Okay, that then brings up this screen, which then allows me to skip over to the minute because I can actually program this. To, to shoot 99 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. So almost like a 100 hour maximum shutter speed, crazy. Anyway, let's uh, put that back to zero. Let's go to minutes. We're gonna go to four minutes. That goes to four minutes. And I said here, it's gonna be five seconds. Okay, so let's go around this way, it's a lot easier. There we go. So four minutes and five seconds from there, we go okay. That's awesome, All right? Um, and just another point, um, what I normally do, is I will do a mirror lockup of one second, which means that um, when I press the shutter, the mirror is going to lock up. The camera is then going to wait for one second for everything to die down, no vibrations. And from that moment then, it's going to start the exposure one second after the, after the shut button has been depressed. Okay, so let's go and get this set up now, get the composition shot, and we'll see if the guidance from these apps um, is any good. Okay, folks, so all that remains is to take the shot. I've got the four minutes and five second exposure time set into the camera. Uh, the filters are in place. The scotch tape is on the eyepiece. All that remains is to take the shot. Um, and I will do so right now. The mirror lockups just happened and now the exposure's kicked in. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait four minutes and five seconds for the shot to, uh, to, to, to happen. Uh, and so in the interim, folks, let's dance. And by dance, folks, I mean this. Uh, pretty soon, hopefully, winter is going to be gone from Okinawa. You can see the sun, but it's actually cold for us down here at the moment. Um, very soon, the spring is going to kick in. I have actually seen some wildlife uh, on a few of the uh, exploratory trips I've done so far, looking for new places to go. Um, and hopefully this year, things are going to get crazy wild um, with the wildlife here. And I'll be taking you on those adventures. Um, some good news on that front uh, to answer the question of a lot of people. Mark, when are you going to invo involve some birding in this? Well, hopefully this year that's going to come to fruition as well. There is quite an ambitious plan uh, with regards to including some birding in the wild content that I create. So hopefully, fingers crossed, all of that will happen in good time. Um, I'm going to put the image up on the end of the screen at the end of the video uh, of the image that we've just taken. So you guys can be the judges of whether that came out or not. Um, but until next time, folks, I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, please do, if you haven't already, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be updated as and when new content is available here on Sea Wild Earth. And I'll catch up with you guys very soon. Take care, and I'm just about to fall over. Bye-bye. <laughs>